Thank you for tuning in to Love in Your Hands with Cynthia Clark, the podcast about how to live life with love, passion, and purpose. This podcast is sponsored by loveinyourhands.com, the place to heal your emotional past, identify real compatibility, and find long-lasting love through the merging of ancient science, modern technology, and quantum physics. Tired of superficial connections? Start your free Soulmate Connection membership today at loveinyourhands.com. Now here's your host, Cynthia Clark, palm reading consultant, compatibility expert, and heart harmonizer. Hi there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Cynthia Clark, and I'm always excited to talk about how to live life with love, passion, and purpose. And I thought today would be fun to bring in a little palm reading lesson um, about the fingerprints, because uh, fingerprints are not something that I talk about every day. And yet, fingerprints are one of the most important aspects of palm reading because your fingerprints actually form on your hands five months before you're born and they are completely unchangeable. So when you think about coming into your body and this incarnation, this experience on earth, you came in with a set of 10 fingerprints that are totally unique to you and they represent your soul's agenda. In other words, where you're going to find fulfillment, how you're going to find fulfillment, how you're going to find your, um, just what's going to make you happy in life, okay? So knowing what your fingerprints say is actually pretty important. And I'm just gonna give a really short little lesson. There are four basic types of fingerprints that you can have. Uh, one is called the loop, okay? And it looks like, like a wave, like a loop. Okay, this is the most common type of fingerprint, by the way. There's about 70% of all fingerprints look like this. Okay, so the loops represent the water element. And if you have a predominance of these in your hands, that shows that you're going to be somebody who's tied into the emotional realm. And you're really here to experience the full range of emotions and also uh, learning, and I look at all of fingerprints as a learning lesson, you're learning how to balance those emotions, okay? So if you have eight or more loops in your hands. Uh, the second type of fingerprint is the whirl, which looks like a little circular pattern. Sometimes it looks like a spiral galaxy. If you happen to have four or more of these in your hands, that's somebody who is really here to find an outlet of service and what type of service do you want to do for the planet. So service people sometimes, by the way, they need to be a little bit selfish every once in a while because that's the only way they're really gonna discover what kind of service they wanna do, okay? Uh, the next type of fingerprint we have is what's called the simple arch. And it looks just like a, like a little hill, like a little bump comes up and back down. And the simple arch, uh, represents the realm of peace and inner peace. And if you have two or more of these type of fingerprints, that means that you're somebody who is looking for balance in your life. And a lot of times you're going to need to get unbalanced in order to get back into balance, <laughs> which is all good. So that's if you have the arches. And then the last type of fingerprint is called the tented arch. And it actually goes up into a peak and then it comes back down. And the peak is usually right in the center part of the finger. And uh, tented arches, if you have two or more of these, that's somebody who is really seeking wisdom and somebody who loves to learn, somebody who loves to just absorb all that life has to offer in terms of what is, what am I learning, what can I teach? And they oftentimes become the natural teachers uh, out there in the world. So if you have those tented arches. So uh, that's today's palm reading lesson. Um, take a look at your own fingerprints and see what's dominant on your hands. And that leads us into our very special guest today. We have Jeff Hughes, who is a passionate entrepreneur, speaker, and business mentor. He loves teaching people how to unlock the power of their mind to create a successful life and business. 
He's dedicated his life to sharing and helping others create massive success after overcoming his own challenges. In his journey, Jeff has learned the importance of mindset and self-image to achieve maximum potential. He has found that humans will only accomplish what we believe we can achieve. So welcome to the show, Jeff. This is so fun. Thank you for having me on today. So I love everything about what I just read <laughs> about you. So um, let's talk about that. So how did you, first of all, what's your story and how did you get into this? Well, we'll have to excuse for the time because I won't, uh, it's very, very, it's very long. So I'm going to give the, the short and narrow so that we have, uh, so that we can make it on the show here. Um, essentially, I grew up in, with a single mom. Um, she was on social assistance. I grew up in a small town in Ontario. And uh, from a very young age, um, I knew um, that there was something more for myself. Um, I was different. Uh, very introverted, but um, very competitive. And uh, by the time I was 15 years old, I had already been sexually abused twice, um, already thinking about committing suicide. And uh, I was really challenged with um, communicating and having relationships with people. Um, by the time I dropped out of school in, in grade nine, uh, I decided to sell drugs. That was my very first beginning of entrepreneurship, <laughs> selling <laughs> drugs on the street. So uh, there must have been something in me at that point. Um, by the time I was uh, 21, I, I got involved um, with now my ex-wife, um, ended up having three children together, and I started my, my road of, um, you know, the typical working, working a job nine to five. And uh, I struggled financially. I mean, my first job, it was $24,000 a year. Um, we had, uh, we had our, our oldest son and then another kid on the way. And then the other son came. So, you know, $24,000 before taxes really wasn't a lot to survive off of. We were eating like itchy ban and, and really struggling. Um, I slow, but here's the thing. I was really, really passionate about business in some way, shape or form. It was kind of like my outlet to show people um, that I was good enough because that was my story as I constantly told myself I wasn't good enough. So I was constantly out there showing the world that I could be. I was an athlete when I was younger, uh, soccer, football, basketball, baseball, the love of all sports. And, uh, now that became my outlet in business. And, um, there was two things. I was the most loved, um, employee when it comes to the management and also the most hated. Because, um, like I said, I struggled with getting along with people, um, but I brought in um, really, really good numbers. So, and management and owners and stuff like that, you know, they're looking at the bottom line for themselves. But the, uh, the culture that I was creating as well was pretty chaotic. And, and uh, what I can share was, uh, what I can share with people is that chaos was also going on in my own head. <laughs> so what was going on in my head, I was creating that existence externally as well. Um, cause we're always constantly looking for people to confirm what we believe about ourselves, which is our identity. And, uh, anyways, I kept moving on and on and on up and up and up between new, new different positions between cell phones, between selling cars, um, selling robots to the DEA, the CIA. Um, and you know, society was seeing me as moving up the chain when it came to finances. I was a mess when it came to actual um, taking care of my finances, but I moved my way up. This time, at this point now, I had three children. Um, 2008 came along. I just bought a house. I was leveraged heavy in debt, and I ended up going bankrupt. Everyone knows what happened to the economy. What affected the United States mm -hmm. also came and affected Canada as well. So there I was bankrupt. My cars got repossessed. I was moved from my house, and I had to buy another car. So... Um, at this point, I found myself another job. This was um, in the Yellow Page industry, and I still had this knack for sales and um, ended up getting to the point where I was making $150,000 a year. And for me, coming from where I came, I, was like, I, was, I felt like I was in my glory, like I'd never made so much money in my life. But the constant story throughout all this is no matter where I was going, no matter as much as I was kept stepping up and leveling up in what considered to be you know, finances, money, um, I just wasn't happy. My relationship was in shambles. 
Um, and so much so that we ended up in a split and I had my, what they, you would be considered to be the, uh, my first per peak emotional experience. And, uh, we split up and there was this buzzword of personal development. And so everyone told me it's amazing. So I was like, okay, let's do it. So I took my now ex, we went over to this personal development session. It was called landmark forums. And I left that with, I guess my own perception isn't the only perception. There's other people's perceptions as well. And it doesn't make mine to be right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was my first awakening. And when I say awakening, first opportunity to see things in a different light. Um, but as much as I wanted to change the world, as much as I felt like leaving that class and I was so happy and I can just do all this, um, the dopamine wore off after about four or five days and I came back to exactly where I was. Um, not good enough, struggling, didn't get along with anybody. Ended up getting into internet marketing, made my first million dollars, bought the dream car. Um, Even said when I was younger, I I didn't say at the beginning of this, but when I was eight or nine, I always said I'd have a black Porsche 911 and I'd make a million dollars. Didn't know how I was going to do it, but that was a dream that I had when I was a young child. Uh, Universe directed me exactly um, where I was to get what I got, but it didn't, <laughs> I didn't give the route. It showed me the route. Mm. And, uh, at the end of the day, none of it made me happy. And I ended up having three seven figure businesses. Um, and I'm just before my 40th birthday, I woke up on December 26, 2016 with an autoimmune disease. And I was cross-eyed. I had migraine headaches. I actually thought I had brain cancer and I had three spinal taps, two misdiagnoses. And on my 40th birthday, I was admitted into the hospital and told that I had Miller Fisher syndrome. And it was an autoimmune disease that was attacking my eye nerves. So mm. I was literally cross eyed. I had to wear a pirate patch so that I could see mm. out of one eye. Wow, that's awful. Yeah. And that mm. was my awakening. Um, that was my, my day of like, what am I doing? No, and, and here's the thing I had done other personal development stuff throughout that, I'd gone through a divorce. and Um, there needed to be there for me, there, there was something more because I had paid for mentors. I had gone to personal development course. I'd read books. I'd done all that stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, when I was in my room by myself, um, I wasn't happy. I could talk about all this personal development stuff and the spirituality, um, from a conscious level. But what I learned was 95% of our being is from the unconscious level. And I definitely. I became a student. Um, I became obsessed with how the brain operated, how we transfer information. And uh, throughout all my studies, and Aristotle famously said it's been around for many, 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 many years. And thought leaders and people around the world, they know this and they don't share this with um, the real world. But between zero and seven, 80% of all your beliefs are in place. Aristotle's famous saying, show me a boy till he's seven and I'll show you the man. They knew that between zero and seven, the environment and what you share with that child would make them into who they are 25 and beyond that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was like, oh, okay, well, what does that mean? So upon further study um, and understanding between the delta and the theta uh, brain waves, which is where all of our programming comes from to create our identity, I found out that um, I didn't have cognitive reasoning till eight. So everything that was told to me between zero and seven, I took as fact and things that were repeated over and over and over again, it downloaded as basically that's who I am. And, uh, you know, what society would see is, is, um, a challenge for a normal child, um, based on the stories that my mom was telling me, um, I downloaded that I was, that I wasn't good enough and I behaved that way. And what I found was, is we're constantly looking to confirm our identity about ourselves And the chaos that was going in my head, I was portraying externally to everyone else. Mm. And then when they would, when they would confirm what I believed about myself, I would get mad. (laughs) (laughs) I would get upset about it. Yeah, sure. It makes sense. And uh, so I became an expert of the unconscious mind, understanding what the reticular activating system, understanding what the novel stimuli, understanding all the, all the, all the experiences that were triggering me to where I was. And it was very simple. The unconscious mind processes information at 40 million bits per second. The conscious mind operates at 40. So what does that mean? Well, everyone goes, practice makes perfect, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever the conscious mind thinks about on a regular basis, 
after you've done it a million times, the unconscious mind goes, oh, that must be important. We, we require that. And it'll download things at a much faster, more rapid pace if there's um, fear involved, if it's like your life. Because mm-hmm. um, it obviously as a safety mechanism, its job is to keep you alive. And uh, what I learned was that through meditation, through getting in the delta, the delta and the theta brain waves, through um, reading, through changing my thought process, between be, um, understanding mindfulness, that I could literally transform my identity because my identity was what was actually stopping me from creating the life that I wanted. Um, all the money in the world did not make me happy. In fact, it just kept comp- it just kept filling this bottomless pit of nothing. And that's why we see a lot of people. Money doesn't make you happy. It doesn't. It's it's the spirituality behind um, our being because we are energy. We are spirits. And uh, what I recognized was that helping other people was the only thing that was going to be 100% fulfilling in my life. So um, I started doing it. I put people through. Uh, they call, uh, I call it my business accelerator program. I took uh, incubated 18 students over a year and put them through um, what I consider to be the exorcism because quite honestly, changing your identity is the hardest thing I have absolutely, absolutely ever experienced in my life. Mm. And every one of my students, they said, it's like putting them through a blender. But on the other side of all that, is an amazing opportunity to be a completely different person and see things in a different light. And uh, that's where I am today. I'm, I'm, uh, my, my mission statement just for me and, and what, I, what I want to accomplish in this world is to awaken people to the possibilities and that transforms lives and creates a legacy. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think right now, you know, with the, the modern education system, if we took somebody from a hundred years ago or 200 years ago, and we brought them here today, the only thing that they would recognize is the education system. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned that because I was just talking about that with my husband the other day. And I was like, the stuff they teach you in school doesn't even matter. Like, <laughs> it's just horrible what they teach you. It's to program you to be yeah. an employee. It's yeah. literally to program you. They don't teach you about fi- finances. They don't teach you about emotional intelligence. They yeah. don't teach you communication. They don't teach you any of the stuff that literally will allow you an opportunity to thrive in this planet. Because if you have all of those things, right. then guess what? You can connect with any human being. Absolutely. And, and you can build anything that you want in this world. Literally, as the Wolf of Wall Street said, and just like you know anything else, the only thing that's stopping you from getting what you want is that story in your head. Absolutely. And the craziest thing about it, it's not even your story. No, it's what was programmed in you as a child. <laughs> yes, it's what you assumed from somebody else, what they felt about themselves, but because you didn't have cognitive reasoning, you <laughs> took it as fact. And because they repeatedly say it over and over and over again, mm-hmm. you own it. So then in fact, you're actually walking around living somebody else's life that you didn't even get an opportunity to create yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So this is a fascinating conversation. I love this because this definitely ties in with your hands. Um, By the way, your hands form their shape by the time you're about six or seven years old. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're going to have that programming totally set by then. And yeah, it absolutely impacts you. So if somebody is struggling and they recognize that they're struggling, what are some of the steps that you recommend that they start to take? Well, it's funny. Um, I recognize that I struggle and I think a lot of people understand um, on a conscious level their behaviors. Um, One of the challenges with uh, after recognizing it is reprogramming the subconscious mind, because here's the thing. Everyone talks about all you got to do is reprogram. Well, if that was that easy and we could just like plug something in and download it in, anybody would be able to do it. The biggest challenge is that your unconscious mind is also in, in charge of your central nervous system and your central nervous system is linked with your emotions. And we all know that when emotions take over, those, in a lot of cases for most people, are what drives um, response. Um, so the first thing is, is identifying your, your story, as I like to say it. What is fueling you? What are you sitting in your room? 
what are those things that you're beating yourself up about, right? Mm -hmm. Because once you've been able to identify that, right, you'll be able to reflect back on what were those moments where I owned that. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of peace to knowing where it all came from. But again, that's not going to fix it because right. our unconscious mind processes information of 40 million bits a second. When it recognizes a, f a space, um, a feeling, any of that stuff, it goes into autopilot. It just literally starts operating from that place. Understanding where your anxiety is coming from, understanding what depression is, understanding how, what, your, what your central nervous system is giving to you. So the first thing I, I do with any of my students um, is identifying what it is that you want in your life. And, and the funny thing is you ask somebody, what do you want to do with your life? And they stop and they, they stare off <laughs> and they look and they go, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Right. I don't know. And you want to know why? Because your frontal lobe becomes fully developed at 25. And once it becomes fully developed, you stop taking risk. You start looking at everything based on logic. Albert Einstein, for me, like the most epic human being in, that ever lived on this planet, based on how advanced he was, he knew this stuff. Mm -hmm. He goes, logic will get you from A to B. Imagination will get you everywhere. Mm -hmm. Logic is everything based on past experiences. So you measure whether or not you're capable of doing it. So most people create visions or create goals based on things that they had from the past or whether or not they can even do it. And then when you write a goal that's beyond what you've experienced before, your central nervous system sends off anxiety. It's like, oh man, we can't do that. And I remember the last time that we tried something that we've never done before. Let me go and look up that program. Oh, that, that was frustration, anger, anxiety. Oh, and you quit. I remember that. And my job is to stop you from doing anything that frustrates you, angers you, hurts you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to send off that emotion to you. And then I'm going to kick in the next thing, which is we're going to distract you so that you find everything else. This is where procrastination kicks in. We're going to procrastinate everything possible to stop you from going after that goal. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is what happens. I mean, we see everyone, I mean, we're about actually just about to lead up to January 1st when everyone goes January 1st, my new year's resolution and statistics mm -hmm. show that, what is it by the 15th of the month, like literally 80% or 85% of people have literally already given up on their goal. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's true. That's exactly what happens. So the very first thing is, is knowing what you want. And that is a challenge in itself because you're going to measure everything based on logic. Mm. But here's the thing. Everything outside of logic gives you an opportunity to experience something different. And really, what is your relationship with fear? Um, one thing that I've studied with the, the, you know, the most prolific, you know, people in the world, Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, all these people, they were willing to risk. They were, their relationship with fear was that failure just meant a lesson learned and that was that much more fuel to go after what it is that they want. The challenge that most people run into is soon as, the, soon as, soon as they get to that spot where is the first peace didn't go according to the plan, we give up. Mm -hmm. And your relationship with fear and understanding that everything on the other side of fear is where your greatest passion, your greatest um, experiences lie. So for anybody out there, my, my thing for you is stop looking at logic and how, stop looking at, you know, how do I actually do this? Because I'm going to tell you right now, when I was eight or nine years old, I had no idea. I didn't even have any, any, any sense of how I was going to get a black Porsche 911. I had no idea how I was going to make a million dollars, literally none. But that's the thing, the way your unconscious mind is, as Med Milet says, your obsessions become your possessions. 
whatever you become obsessed about and push through. Mm -hmm. Yes, very well said. So um, I love this conversation. Uh, so we need to face our fears a little bit, don't we? <laughs> Yeah, change your relationship with your fears. Yeah. What is the relationship with it? Because we talk so much about, you know, you got to push through, you got to push it. But what is your relationship? If your relationship with fear is one of, oh my gosh, it's failure. I don't like the way this is feeling. This sucks. Then guess what? That's exactly what you're going to get. But if you have a relationship with fear as, oh my God, this is exhilarating. This gives me an opportunity to learn. This is a new lesson, no matter what the outcome, because I'm not attached to the outcome. Man, you will, you will create a life that most people dream about because then you're not willing, you're, you're willing to fail to get what you want. Mm -hmm. Fail forward. As Steve Jobs says, fail forward. Right. Or did say, I should say. <laughs> and it's okay to fail because that's all part of the process. hundred <laughs> percent. What is failure? Failure yeah. is learning something. Right. So what's your relationship with fear? Fear is an opportunity to learn. Yes. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. See, I'm a, uh, I, I like to relate it to skiing because I'm an expert skier. And I talk to a lot of people who, oh yeah, I tried that once. And I hated it and I was so afraid and I never went back up and it's like, well, of course you didn't like it. <laughs> you only tried it once. You didn't even know how to stand on your skis after one day. Like, what do you expect? And, and it's funny that you say that. Um, and it's very, very likely, and this obviously isn't a blanket statement, but it's very, very likely is mm -hmm. that, that, that same person struggles with with challenging themselves to do anything outside that because how you show up one way is how you show up every way in your life mm, yes absolutely so mm. okay so how do people work with you um you know the biggest thing right now like this little incubator session was my way of giving back um i only do very very small groups of it um because it's the most challenging experience that anyone's ever experienced because it puts you through eight, eight weeks of experiencing what you want in a life, experiencing what's my story, experiencing the challenges of overcoming the habits that we've created for our lives. Um, how am I showing up in the world? Self-reflection. What is the language I'm using? That's another thing. I mean, we could go into a whole other topic. What's the language? I can talk to somebody for literally five minutes and I, I, and I can, for the most part, know where that person's coming from, from an unconscious level, because your unconscious mind speaks even when you don't. Mm -hmm. yes. The words you use the visuals that you give, the body language that you do. And in a lot of cases, the words that you say don't mean anything. Right. Our, our body language and our, yeah. our body language and reflection, because mm -hmm. I was talking with somebody today is this is a great opportunity. Um, one of their challenges in life was they're as some, a lot of people on social media, they're looking for, you know, they're putting pictures and they're looking for the, the like or the comment or the heart. Mm -hmm. And I challenged them to look at it and I said, well, what for, first off, <laughs> what for? Uh -huh. And is it working for you? Mm -hmm. Those are the two things that you should ask yourself and everything that you do. What for? And is it working for me? Is it serving me? Mm -hmm. Good questions. Yeah. So what for? Okay. I'm looking for attention validation. Okay. And when I get that attention validation, is it working for me? No. In fact, you're looking for more of it. Mm -hmm. So you're never fulfilled by it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then what's the layer even deep, deeper? I'm not good enough. Mm. I'm not lovable. Right. So right. with that, um, the challenge for her specifically, the challenge for her specifically was, um, as she was speaking, she's like, well, I'm getting better and things are working, working a lot better because, you know, 
we have like a, a, a social relationship and business in, in some way, shape or form. And so obviously I speak with her on a regular basis, not as a client or anything like that. But she asked a question and as she was speaking, she grabbed her foam roller and she was rolling herself and rolling her legs. And what that means is that she was distracted. She was distracting herself because she wasn't being honest with herself with what was actually in the unconscious mind and how she was beating herself up every single day. Mm -hmm. So I didn't pay attention to the words she was saying. I was in a, I was actually paying attention to how she was positioning herself. And then I shared that with her. I said, I might suggest that you look at what you're doing right now because you're <laughs> distracting yourself right now from this conversation. And in my experience, what that means is that that's not actually what's going on in your unconscious mind. And no different than when somebody says, put out your arm, We've, we've, uh, who is it? There was a, there was a chiropractor that put this out there where you put out your arm and they ask you to say the wrong name and you say the wrong name and they can push your arm down. Mm -hmm. Then when you right. say muscle testing, yeah. What's that? Muscle testing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's focused on the lie and it's not focused on, on, on keeping your, keeping your, your whole central nervous system focused in that point. So you're just going to be able to push it down, right? Well, it's the same type of thing because mm -hmm. she wasn't being honest. It was off blasting around trying to distract her from what was the actual truth mm. yes very good um something to think about Hundred <laughs> percent. yeah absolutely uh well this has been so much fun i feel like we could just talk all day um <laughs> but um we should wrap up so uh is there anything else that you want to share before before we sign off no, I mean, um, they can find me online, uh, jeffhughes.com, G-E-O-F-F-H-U-G-H-E-S.com. -E I'm giving away a free free ebook, and it's not one of those ebooks where you go and get it, and it's like three pages, and you're like, okay, what did I just sign up for? This really didn't have any value. And it's the top 1% healthy habits of the world. And basically what I did is I took um, – the most some of the most successful people in the world are what I perceive to be the most successful people in the world based on fulfillment, based on what they're giving back in the world. Um, and obviously finances are included with that. And I took the biological and mixed with the habits and then gave you the reasons why each one of these things work to create um, a successful life, a, f a successful, fulfilling life. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good read, take you probably about an hour, but it's all the pieces that I've been able to uh, put together for myself that really gave me an opportunity to change my identity as well. And it's completely free. You just go on there, sign up, and then I'll give you five different emails on some of my experiences along with the book. Mm, wow. That sounds like a lot of amazing information. So thank you so much for that. And I'll make sure I put that in the notes too so people can, can link to that. Uh, so remember everybody that you can live life with love, passion, and purpose and get out there and take action and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you for listening to Love in Your Hands. Please rate, review, and subscribe to show your support. This podcast is sponsored by loveinyourhands.com the place to find the secret ingredients to your soulmate. Start your free soulmate connection membership today using the most innovative and accurate algorithm to match you to potential long-lasting love, all at loveinyourhands.com.